So let's go ahead and test this first form. I'm going to go ahead and type in hello, and I'm going to click display the string. Okay, it says your string was hello. Now let's go back to the PHP and explore what happens when this page got re-rendered after we submitted the form. So I'm going to go back to the code and I'm going to scroll up to the top. So let's start here with the opening PHP tag. We establish our myString variable, and then we're checking to see if the action variable is set in the request array. Now again, request includes all of the variables and values that get passed through the query string as part of a git submit process, but also anything that gets passed through the post submit process. So the reason why we're using it here is that some of our forms use git and some of our forms use post. So we need to access both the git and the post array, which we can do through the request array. So we're checking to see what the action is. Now, if we look at our form, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here. We see that the value is actually display. So when we submit this form, we'll get the value of display for the name of action. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back up here. So after we submit this form, this value actually is set. It does have a value, the value is display. And next what we're going to do is use a switch statement. So a switch statement is just a control structure that is an alternative to using a series of if statements. Specifically, if we're using an if statement to check the value of one variable and running different code based on the value of that variable, then a switch statement can be a little bit easier to read. In this case, we're going to perform three different actions based on the value of the action that gets sent through the form. So we could write the code if request action equals display, and then write the code in there, and then we could write another if statement that says, if the action key in the request variable is contact, then do this other code, and then end that if statement. The switch statement is a little bit more compact. So the way we construct it is we use the switch keyword here, and then in parentheses, we have the value that we're going to be comparing against. In this case, it's the action input. Then we use an opening curly brace, and then each time we want to compare the value of this against something else, say to check if it equals display, we use the case keyword, a space, and then in quotes, the value of that item. At the end of the value, we'll add a colon, and then we'll add the code that we want to run, and then most of the time, at the end of that code, we'll add a line that says break, and then a semicolon. Break can be used in various control structures in order to stop the control structure that it's currently in. So what break will do is stop the switch statement at this point and will resume the code at the end of the curly brace that matches up with the initial curly brace for the switch statement. So we'll skip down to here and start running this code. Now there are some exceptions to adding this break item here which we'll explore in later videos. So what will happen here it will check to see if the action variable is display. It will find this to be true because that's the form that we submitted. And then it will print this heading one tag that says your string was, and then it will print the my string variable inside of the post array. Now this is the first time that you've seen post. In our previous example, we used get. In this example, we used request first, but post is the third item. So request equals post plus the get variable and then it will print the ending of the h1 tag. If we jump back to the browser and take a look at our output, you see it says your string was hello, but if we look at the URL here, there's nothing at the end of test.php. So that means that if we input this URL and click enter in order to refresh, then the forms will be rebuilt from scratch.